Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat. So today we're gonna have a little play with um, one of the journal covers that my aunt made. And um, I have them in my shop now. There's a medium size and a large size. And I will show you um, the front of them because I don't want to open up all this packaging. But um, on my uh, Crafty Cat USA, dot com shop you'll be able to see um the insides of them and the different fabrics and that so this also comes with it and these are just some instructions that my aunt uh drew up just to give you some ideas you don't have to do it like this at all you can do it any way that you want to do it it's just she was kind of giving you ideas letting you know that there's three layers of fabric for each um you know part of the fold and um you can choose to turn those into actual like fabric journal pages like if you wanted to do an entirely fabric journal you could um do that and i'll i'll show you once we get there but um, i'm just showing you these instructions and then she was also saying you can um cut some parts out and maybe stitch around them to make little picture spots um and turn these into pockets by stitching you know here 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 and there or you can you know you can choose to stitch all the way around and cut the center out for a for a picture um this one has a pocket and a picture so and we'll talk about that more as we are going through so she's just giving you lots of ideas on this you can use things like she's got down here um buttons stenciling stamps ribbons um you know like i'm saving some threads i've got like a little piece of rickrack i mean you can add to these however you like to decorate them or if you choose you can leave it the way that it is with just the um, decoration like a button on the front and um you can stitch the whole thing together and just kind of have it as a flap cover for your paper pages i mean there's it's really endless the things that you could do with these so we are going to get into that so this is um this one was a the one that i chose to use for the demonstration so when you go onto the website you won't see a as a choice because that's the one that i'm using to demonstrate and um, b looks like this on the cover with a nice big like autumn type leaf some of them i would say you could use all of them for a fall journal but some of them wouldn't have to be fall journals at all like they're um they really could be any time of the year she's used a lot of like tim holtz fabric and um i cat i think it's called i cat fabric batik i don't know i'm not very good with fabric i don't know all the names but i've listed them in my shop in the description so that you can see those and i should have written them down but i just forgot because i was too busy trying to Get all the other stuff together so anyway this one is b with the big green leaf there and it opens the same as all of them the flap goes up the two side flaps come out like that so they're all um same in orientation like that and then this one is um you can definitely see tim holtz fabric here nice big button so this one i think you could definitely use for fall or um the instructions are back here but this is a little more rusty back here um for fall or not again this could be used for fall but doesn't have to be it's just bright colors and this is that tim holtz abandon like the paper that i used for the halloween journal um here because i recognize that and then oh i'm not telling you the letters jeez well the first one was b this one is c obviously next right d is the one with three buttons and you'll see all this. Don't think, oh my gosh, I got to remember which one I want. It's all um, on my shop. It has them um, labeled by alphabet letters. There's D. Okay. E has a nice big uh, kind of a ceramic button here. And there's some other little beads she's um, put on the uh, thread that she's sewn that on with. And these ones are sewn on all these buttons are already sewn to the flap but that's the only thing that's sewn so far because you know that way you can uh, make it your own so that one is e with that nice big ceramic button this is f with this face button here and again that's that tim holtz abandoned um, fabric there and back here you can see it so quite a few of them do have at least one piece of tim holtz fabric 
This one is G, a nice, really pretty green, kind of a leaf green pattern back here for fall and this green design and then these nice brown dots there. So that's G and then the button there. And I like how she's added these, the beads to the buttons. That's a great idea just to give them a little more interest. This one's H and you can see this is again, the Tim Holtz abandoned design. And it's all on the back. But definitely great fall colors. But again, this one would not have to be fall at all. It's really just the ones with the leaves that really like seem like just fall. You know what I'm saying? This one's beautiful with, this is again the Tim Holtz paper. Or I keep saying paper, but it's the fabric, Tim Holtz fabric. Uh, that one's eight, or no, I, sorry, H, I. Mm -hmm. I all come with the instructions. This one is J. And again, that's Tim Holtz uh, fabric there. J. And K sold already. So that one isn't available. But here's L. And that's Tim Holtz. These are both Tim Holtz fabrics. And M, more Tim Holtz fabric there. And I'm sorry, I don't know the name of these other ones, but they're gorgeous and they go beautifully with um, the Tim Holtz fabrics. And then N is definitely another fall one with the big, nice um, orange colored leaf there. And the tree patterned fabric here. So that's N, okay? And like I said, all the letters are labeling them um, in the shop. So you're not going to have to try to figure that out. So don't worry about that. I just, just wanted to tell you in case you for sure saw when you wanted it, it would make it that much easier for you. I always knock down all my little whole reinforcers. Okay. So what I want to do, um, something that my aunt uh, Susanna mentioned was, you know, you could have it open and then... You could turn these into pages, like I said, and have one page, two page, three pages, and you could stitch it here to, you know, hold, hold it together. And then you could have four, sorry, I, I'll show you what I'm doing there, five, <clears throat> six pages here. And then you could choose to have these be pages going the other, you know, direction up like this, one, two, three, and then you could have this as a big pocket in back if you wanted to just by cutting this <clears throat> and then, you know, you're going to stitch around it. And if you don't stitch, this might be a better project for people who do stitch. If you don't, you're going to have to use some kind of like fusible web or something like that in order to, you know, get it to stay together. You can hand stitch, like if you do slow stitching, one of these would be super fun because you could do all kinds of slow stitching on it to embellish it, you know. And you could also, um, like, if you wanted to use this middle page, which I dyed this one. I used the Tim Holtz um, Oxide inks and some water <clears throat> to dye the, this one. But I didn't do this one yet inside of here because... Um, you may be able to see parts of it, you know, even if it's just the edge for the pocket or whatever. So I wanted it dyed. You don't have to do that. That was just my choice. So, um, but this one, you could attach other pages, you know, by just stitching it in. Like if you took a piece of fabric, um, say this piece of fabric is the same width, you know, doubled like this, like it's this wide. And then when you fold it in half like this, <clears throat> you could set it in here open it up the same way and then stitch right down the middle to add more pages in if you want to do just fabric pages and no uh, paper pages at all. So that would be another really fun, great idea to do with these. If you want a whole fabric journal, that would be great. Uh, hold on, I'm going to grab something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch Sorry, I have this pocket going here that I'm working on. Um, some paper, a paper signature, one paper signature in this side. 
so it will come out like that it'll be attached and then another one I'm going to use her in here too because I never ended up using her in the other book that I did and I'm going to attach another one here so then it's going to be like this and that's going to be my journal so it will have two signatures stitched in to a spine here and a spine on this side and this flaps up these will open we're going to make pockets and things and then uh that signature is there you open this one up and there's a signature here that will be stitched in back here and then i'm not totally sure how i'm going to do the pocket here yet but i kind of want her she's going to have to go in a top loading pocket because she's so tall like the top will probably just stick out a tiny bit but she goes so perfectly with this that um I just couldn't resist. I just think she needs to go in here. So, and this is my um, Fall is in the Air digital download. If you're wondering what paper I'm using with this one, since I am doing a fall journal, I'm using um, my Fall is in the Air digital download. So, and I've printed uh, most of my pages front and back. Oh, this one is upside down, but this is my, um... oh, but then that's upside down. How did I do that? Uh, industrial add-on digital is what I used for that one and this is my follows in the air and then this one see I mess that up all the time when I'm trying to print stuff is uh, follows in the air again here I thought I did oh I did do a page with the industrial add-on too right there so anyway that's the paper that I'm using I might have to fix a couple pages so it's, eh, the whole printing upside down thing but for now, what we're going to do is kind of play with this to figure out how we want to do some pockets. I'm not going to worry about this, this front flap at the moment. I'm just going to worry about this center grouping of fabric. And I'm saving my little strings as they come off because we'll use them for some different spots. But anyway, um, what I was thinking. Oh, except I kind of need the width of this to figure out how I want the pages to be, huh? This goes like that. Yeah, okay. I'll just keep it kind of here because it's not a big deal for it to be like that. When they come to my house by Tab Calloway from Spotify. Alexa. Sorry about that. I, I don't know. She just decided she wanted to play a song for me, I guess. Um, thing drives me nuts. Anyway, um, so what I thought I would do, if you're wondering what these little squares are for, I'm going to cut like a little slit in here and then stitch around the square and then I'll have a tiny pocket but I'm also going to have um, a couple side loading pockets there so I know that's a little confusing but let's try to try to do this and see if we can get it to make sense because <laughs> I understand and this is new for me too I have not done one of these I mean we've talked my aunt and I've talked about it and all that but um yeah it's it's all new for me so I've taken my square about where I want it and I've marked on either side, you know, just took a pencil and marked on either side where um, I want to cut to. This one's a little harder to see, but it's right here. And so I, I don't want to cut my pockets this long. I'm just trying to give myself an idea of roughly how long to cut the pocket. Uh, I need a ruler. Where's my metal ruler at? I thought I hung it up up there. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess we'll use this other one. I don't know where I put it. I probably have it out where I um, take pictures of stuff. So I'm basically just gonna sort of eyeball it because I'm gonna fray, you know, the edges and stuff. So if it's not 100% straight, then it'll, it will be all right. And I am, don't love these, um, what are these called? The little rotary cutters. But we're gonna try to just cut a slit. Did that work? Oh, it did work. <laughs> you can tell I don't do this fabric thing very often. <laughs> this is not really my wheelhouse. This is um, definitely my aunt is this is what she likes to work with as fabric. 
and that's awesome. I mean, I love it. I just have never had a whole lot of experience working with fabric, so I just don't know very much. But I think this is a super fun idea. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this just so I can work on this piece for the moment. Because what I'm going to have to do first is take this to the um, sewing machine and um, stitch around. I'm going to stitch around that hole first a little bit just to uh, keep it from fraying very far like I want it to fray. But I don't want it to fray so much that, you know, it's um, just a big frayed mess. I don't want it to fray down, you know, into the fabric too far. I want it to keep its little pocket size. And then after I do that, I'm going to stitch this piece of fabric. And I shouldn't have pulled on that. You guys were probably yelling at me that no. Um, I'm going to stitch this piece of fabric back here so that there's something to stop the tag from you know, falling too far into the pocket. Plus, if you don't do that and you try to stick a tag in here and put a tag in here, they're going to be running into each other. You're already going to get a tiny bit of that just because fabric is fairly thin, but uh, it'll at least keep them from, you know, like stopping each other from moving in the pocket. So I'm going to go, and I'm sorry, but this video is going to be a lot of stop and go because, um, you know, I'm going to have to be sewing so that we can actually you know what i'll do i'll just pin it i brought pins over here and then i'll sew try to sew all at once so i want this one back here and i want to make sure i put a little above there and i'll have to take that off anyway to stitch around those holes that's the only problem with trying to film this kind of stuff because um you know you can't the stopping all the time thing is a pain. And I mean, I don't I don't have trouble editing it. It's just that I don't want you guys to have to watch me stop all the time. So anyway, I hope you're having a good day. I didn't even do that. I just like dove right in and got, cause that's the, what I do. But um, yeah, I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're all well and happy and doing good with everything. We're doing good around here. Just keeping real busy like we do, especially at this time of the year. This is our busy time of the year because it's marching band season. So as y'all know, we went to Utah and now we're back from Utah. But see, so what'll happen, I'll fray those some more because I'll stitch down like around here, just, you know, kind of in a rectangle around the cut so that, um, It'll fray a little bit to those spots, but not too far. And then I'll also stitch in a square. So now I'll have a pocket here and I'll have another pocket here. I hope that makes sense. It's tricky to um, try to convey this to people until you see it. Yeah, it's going to be a little tricky. So, um, and then I wanted to turn this into like two pockets. So I'm going to stitch down the middle onto just this piece of fabric right here. And then I'm going to take the third layer. This is where it gets tricky. You got to like really think through where you want your pockets and how it's going to affect the other pockets um, when you start sewing. So um, I will stitch down the center. I'll put, after I'm done sewing all these on and doing all that whole step, then I'll take this piece and I'll put it on and then I'm going to stitch right down the center so that then I have one pocket here and one pocket here. That's all though. I'm only going to stitch down the center at that point. And then after I stitch down the center there, I will put this piece of fabric down and then I'm going to stitch across, I mean, even them up, obviously stitch across the top, down the spine and across the bottom. Then I'll have a large, whole pocket here and I'll have the two pockets there with these little little guys but I'm thinking I'm wondering if I should put like maybe another pocket here could go over the top with a pocket too so that's always something to consider they don't all have to go behind so maybe on this one we'll put another outside pocket so we'll have a pocket there and we could make a little outside pocket here 
So let me think about that. Um, got all kinds of just, I don't have fabrics that match her fabrics, unfortunately, but I do have some other sort of fall-ish fabrics that I think would probably work pretty well. Let's get this in here so we can see colors. That wouldn't be bad. Do I have anything with a little more orange? I do have this. I need to iron it if I'm gonna make it a pocket. But it could go there. Then this would be like here. Yeah, I think that would work. So maybe what I wanna do is stitch this pocket on first. And then I can still do that stitching and it won't affect, it won't close it because this side will be open over here. You just gotta really like think through all the steps before you do them if you want to have uh, multiple pockets around on it. it like I said, if you um, just basically want it the way it is and you just wanna like stitch these up or whatever, or if you just wanna make one pocket and um, you know, you can just stitch around and have a big pocket and a big pocket. And then over here, you could stitch down this side and up and have two large pockets. So it's basically just, I mean, honestly, you could do this forever more and probably come up with different ways to do it. It's just very, um, it's just easy to do. You know, it's easy to come up with different pockets for it. I might go kind of on a deep, deep pocket here. See if we can get this to pair semi-straight. That's always my dilemma with fabric. I never can get it to tear straight enough. And then we'll take these off. I kind of really like this super frayed piece over here a lot. So I'll probably try to keep a lot of that. And then where do we want? This one frays really well. It's, I don't know what kind of fabric it is, but It's a little bit trickier than paper because you're not really sure exactly how the folds are going to go. <laughs> so this one, oh, there's my thread. That one that way and that one that way. Okay. So I need to scoot it over just a little bit more. What I should probably do is pin that, but I know I'm going to just take it apart in a minute and sew it. So I don't really want to do that. Okay, so we'll just play it safe and not, we don't have to go like right into this one. You know what I'm saying? We can make it just a little bit shorter, especially with all the nice fraying there. And we'll cut it here. So yeah, just use what you've got for fabric. I mean, to go with them, you should be able to find if you have some fabric, some colors that go with it. And if not, you know, you can go to like Joann's and just, you know, get a few small pieces of a few fall bits. You don't have, you don't need big pieces. So, cause most of it's already here already. It's just, you know, it's nice to have some little add-on bits to go with it. So yeah, fabrics, ribbons, um, buttons, rickrack, trims. I mean, you could, you could do these in a million different ways. And she's going to come out with some for Christmas too. I just wanted to get these fall ones obviously out. Um, so those will be coming along. But yeah. So that I'm going to stitch right there. We'll save our strings. And then on this side, I think, I haven't really decided how exactly I wanna do this side. I was thinking it might be kind of fun. This flap comes over. I'm gonna have to line everything up again before I sew for sure, but the strings. Um, To do a pocket, like not all the way at the top, like not have it load up here, but, um, down further so in that case what I would do is stitch all the way around it and we're going to cut a slit down a little bit further like we did for the little tiny pockets 
to have something slip into there that way and then you won't even necessarily see that when that one's when that flap's closed sorry just had to have a little sip of my pepsi okay so that'll work so we could do that real quick and I'll stitch all this and I'll come back and show you guys because I think it'll be a whole bunch easier to understand once it's stitched. Because I know right now you're probably going, I don't know what in the world you're talking about. But hopefully it will become much clearer. <laughs> I'm hoping anyway. Okay, so we need to decide what we want to do with this inside pocket because however we stitch that front one obviously will affect, other than we could just stitch, we could just stitch it and down that part to hold it all together. But this one, okay, so we had, I wonder if we could do like bigger you know, cut a line and a line. And we could do a, a frame spot too. Could do a, like a picture frame spot here. I'm not great at cutting circles though, so. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because you want to fray it and make it look kind of raggedy. I think that's the way I would want it. But if you're a super good seamstress, then, you know, you can probably make it totally awesome. But um, let's see. I think I'm going to try to just do a couple of slits and have pocket pockets. So let's do them about the size of this. This will be kind of our piece that we'll use to get an idea of how we want them. Okay, so if that goes there and then it comes up like this. Yeah, we don't want it quite. So that's the advantage of these all coming um, apart, is that you can, um, I'm just going to go with this line right here. Oh, I do need the length though, this way. So what is this? Six squares? I think I'm just going to put it up here because I'll end up messing it up. Okay, so we're going to cut about from here, and like I said, I'm just kind of winging it, because it doesn't have to be perfect that soon. Where would it be good, though? <laughs> you guys are probably like, oh my god. <laughs> I just am not very precise. Okay, and I probably doubly cut that, but it's okay, because like I said, I wanted it to pray, so he's fine. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, and I know I didn't cut it as long as this piece. I, mean, wasn't, I just was kind of trying to get a rough estimate, right? So on this one, I'm going to go with this line. How long did I make that? This is a super old ruler. It was my dad's. Uh, it's it has been through it all. I think. Um, yeah, I think we'll start on that one. I think that'll be good. Come to about here. I'm off my line. It's okay. I don't have the best rotary blade in the whole wide world, obviously, so, <clears throat> I mean, it works, it does its job, but, okay, so then again, what I'm going to do is stitch just roughly, not perfectly, roughly around that hole, just so it only frays so far, and then um, the other one is going to be on the front, so we need... 
this piece. And we're just gonna cut another line, but we're just gonna cut one so that it'll be, it'll go all the way down. Four and a half. mark there. I'm going to put this down just to sort of give me guidance. If you like things more precise, please, please, please do it the way you, you like to do it. I'm just giving you ideas. I'm not telling you this is how to do this. I'm just trying to give you some ideas for like pockets and things. But um, yeah, definitely do your own thing because I am clearly not a pro at this. Okay, so now that one has an opening too. So let's get these back. Well, we don't even need to get them back together quite yet because I'm going to have to sew this first. Okay, so I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to go sew and then I will be right. Okay, I am back uh, much, 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 much later. <laughs> Whew. I am not the best um, sewer in the whole wide world, so... It's always an adventure when I get on the sewing machine. But anyways, um, what I have done, just so you can see, and I haven't completely like sewn the um, front to the back or any of that yet because I'm not sure what I want to do with that um, little panel at the back, but at least we can get an idea. So this opens and there's a pocket here. So you can see I've stitched around the pocket area and this is by no means perfect, right? I don't want it to be perfect. If you want yours to be perfect, you can, um, you know, do lots of measuring and stuff, but I really mostly eyeballed. And so I'm going to continue to try to get these to fray. Like tonight while I'm watching TV, I'm probably going to take it and um, work on getting these to fray more. I'll stop pulling on it though, because I know I'm probably making people crazy. Anyway, um, pocket here. This will get sewn um, to the other two sides, like around here like this and up the middle too because once the um, signature is sewn in it'll be sewn in right here so um that'll get all sewn so you'll just have this fabric pocket here then it opens up and i did a frame here and this is just a cluster of string and another little piece of that orange fabric that i used to make that pocket um lots of threads this is a piece off of a coffee dyed I think it was a hanky and you know you can just pull the edge off of the hanky to get the central part of the hanky and then some old vintage rickrack there I just jumbled it all up put it on there and stitched it down and then so once this is sewn all the way around like this you're going to have a frame here that you'll be able to slip a picture under because you'll have this lip you know it'll be open all the way up to where um, it's stitched here and here. You know what I'm saying? So you'll be able to slip a picture in and have um, that space there to kind of hold it in. Obviously it won't be quite that floppy because of that. And then there's this space that um, I kind of want to deal with too. I thought it might be fun to do like some stamping or something on there, but that's why I colored that piece that's in the center so that uh, that would you know, have some color to it. And then there's a pocket here. So this will be stitched and this will be a pocket. And then I have the little tiny pocket here and another little tiny pocket here. I have stitched this part, sorry, excuse me, um, down the center just to the center portion of fabric. So see, it's just that piece and then I've sewn those other pieces of fabric to the back so that our little tags will stay in there and then once I fray this a little more you'll be able to see a little bit of that color uh, come through a little bit better but um, this will get stitched across the top and across the bottom and of course the signature will be sewn in here so you'll have a side pocket right here and a side pocket here and whatever I put in here will have little uh, at least little tabs to grab and pull out so that they're easy to get a hold of and then this will be all attached to this that's the inside part it'll open and there's this um our orange pocket here and i didn't cut this at all this will all get um closed you could later if you wanted to tear a piece out and add a photo there if you wanted to but i'm gonna leave it um like it is i might add some some kind of fabric 
cluster or something to it. But anyway, this will all get stitched here and here and along this side so that these pockets will open. And then you'll also have this large pocket here. So you can put something in here once they're sewn together. Like I said, I didn't know yet what I wanted to do back here. So I didn't want to stitch it all together and not be able to do that. But at least you're getting an idea of kind of what you can do with this. I think there's um, probably a million things that you could do with it. And uh, like I have this little brad, I thought I might put it on here somehow. If I can get it to poke through somewhere. I'll probably have to... Um, get my little hole poker thingy <laughs> this thingy but yeah you could just keep adding you could keep sewing stuff on you could just go for days I think adding and um you know making different holes and whatever you wanted I, I think it's really kind of endless and I don't think there's necessarily a right or a wrong like um, if you like it super grungy, you know, you could coffee dye all the fabric. If you, um, you know, want it to have more inking on the fabric, you could ink it more. You could do lots of these kind of, I don't know, fabric clusters and threads and go crazy. Or you could, if you're a super good seamstress, you could probably just make it super, um, neat and tidy and nice straight edges and all that which I don't really have but I, I like it a little bit janky and crazy because I just think that that'll be fun once it's all done and I get stuff a little bit more frayed I want more fraying along here you know around the photo it's starting down here so that's good but I definitely want more of that so yeah, I hope this is at least starting to give you guys some kind of idea. I I don't know yet exactly what I want to do with the center. I need to dye this fabric. Oh, you know what we could do? We can do a little stamping or something on that back there. So that, you know, just has a little little something to look at if, if you didn't have a picture in there at the moment. If you put a picture in, you're not going to care the least of what that looks like back there. But I just thought it would be fun um, for the sake of, you know being able to see what's back there. I'm trying to find my leaf stamp, sorry. Oh, great. I don't know where I put those. Okay. Hold on, so instead of, I found them, but um, I think they're too big for the leaves, the leaves <laughs> from Tim Holtz. And I think they might be a little bit big. So I'm gonna use, I have this, um, Fast and fun for fall. This is like from probably 2000 or something. Oh, 1994, even longer ago. So anyway, and then I just got this, but it's also retired. It's called Off the Grid. It's just so perfect because it's got the little grid on it, like my grid. So I don't know. I found it on Etsy. You may be able to find it. It's called Off the Grid. So I don't know, but that's what I have. So that's what I'm using. <laughs> I'm sorry if you don't have those. And I'm just using some oxide that I used to um, color this background and it's gathered twigs is this one. And I don't care if I get all of it or whatever. It's just kind of that something in the background sort of look. Just so there's, when this is over here, you're gonna have a little something to see through there. Not that it'll matter once you put a picture in there or whatever, but until then at least it gives it a little bit of something i'm thinking what i want to do is put some of this on here with another color like the gathered twigs and i'm going to kind of double double dunk it here so that i can get a little bit of the other color too and this doesn't show up like really bright or anything but I don't necessarily have to have it super bright I just want to um have that look of it being back there if that makes sense I'm gonna try I think I have a burgundy yeah it's aged mahogany but it comes out kind of burgundy I'm such a 
mess when I do this stuff. I mean, look at, look at my mess. I just don't want to do this on my stamp pads because then they're going to get all gooped up, you know, different colors mixed in with them. But it's not wanting to take the color very well that way. So it's probably not great. That's a little bit better. Just do a little bit of green something. Um, I think I'm going to do this. But you could um, stencil back on this. You could, you know, use black text. There's lots of things that you can do. So let's just see what that looks like once this is closed. I know it looks just like a mess, but okay, we need a little more over here. Let's get this one. A little bit of everything, right? You just got to kind of hold it there for a minute, I think, to get a little bit more of that color. Came through a little bit, or not much, but a little bit. Yeah, see that does work better, but I just wanted a mix of color. I don't want them to just be just orange and just whatever. Especially because the orange is pretty wow. And I still dirtied up my, I guess it isn't that bad on there though, huh? My uh, stamp pad <laughs> after all that. Okay, let's do the mahogany and I'll wipe this off. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Get the right lids on things here. I'll use that for something else. Okay, and I'm, maybe I'm going to do a little bit of black too. I'm just going to use my little screen dealie. I think you could probably use actual screen for this. You might have to mount it onto something else, but I think it would work to use. Okay. So then once that's down here, you'll just see those leaves and things there. Okay, so I like that just fine for a placeholder until something else is there. Okay. 
So I think we'll stop there because I'm kind of, um, I just don't know yet what I want to do with this, this middle section. I'm pretty sure I want to make it a pocket, but there's also the possibility of, you know, kind of making it into something else. And I'm not sure yet how, what I want to do with that. So <laughs> I'm going to stop there, but I think that at least gives some of you an idea. Cause like I um, have had one of these ordered already. So, um, you know, I just want to make sure that at least there's some kind of idea of how you use it out there. <clears throat> and so when you're all done, it'll all be stitched around, you know, around all these edges and all three layers will be stitched together so that, um, you know, it makes the pockets except for like here, if I decide to make these into pages, individual pages, then that's what I'll do. But I just am not sure yet how I want to do that one. I kind of want to do it that way because this one's not even going to get seen <clears throat> except right there. So yeah. I just don't know. I just need to think about it a little bit before I decide what I want to do. So anyway, I hope that helped you guys. If you have more questions, just let me know and I will try to answer them the best that I can. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and tomorrow we'll do Christmas, Friday, Friday, Christmas. All right. Love you guys. Talk later. Bye.